Hello everyone and welcome to Veteran Gaming. I am Aaron as always and today we're talking about Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. May the force be with you. Oh, there he goes with that crap again. Keep it in church, man. So I've started a general beginner's guide for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes for people that might be new to the game or just starting the game. Uh, I came out with part one already, so we're going to start talking about part two here and getting into uh, some other things you're going to start running across as you play the game. So as we get started with part two here, the first thing I want to talk about is the next team I would recommend that you start farming. So you've already been cruising with your Phoenix here, you're doing well on light side. The next crew I'm going to recommend you start going for is the Empire. Welcome, my master. The Death Star construction Yeah, is great, fine, whatever. That flight was a f***ing nightmare, man. So, I have already discussed from the Phoenix that the Phoenix are going to unlock Emperor Palpatine and Grand Admiral Thrawn. So, this top line up here is basically what I would recommend you actually farm. And then the team on the bottom here, Empire 2, is what I would probably recommend you actually play with. Um, since you have Grand Admiral Thrawn unlocked. The important things to remember here are uh, Darth Vader is a super important character in this game. He's probably going to be your first relic uh, character because there are certain teams that he can solo and there are even more teams with the Emperor Palpatine lead that uh, they can two-man. So that's absolutely amazing. The other thing uh, to remember here is really everybody on the entire screen is a pilot for a ship. Grand Admiral Thrawn is a capital ship you're not going to use until significantly later, but technically he is a pilot. But that's why I'm saying we want to farm this top crew up here because Emperor Palpatine and Royal Guard are part of the, uh, I'm blanking on it, Emperor Shuttle right here, which is a wonderful Empire ship, great support. Uh, then you got, uh, let's get back to our characters here. Then you got Darth Vader, who has a very powerful ship. Grand Moff Tarkin is a capital ship. And the TIE Fighter pilot obviously flies the TIE Fighter. Um, jumping out of this real quick to talk about why Grand Moff Tarkin is so important, because you can get Admiral Piet early on in the game, uh, an Empire support that has the probably the best capital ship in the game, and you can get him early, and he's a way better character than really most of those characters on the screen, other than like Darth Vader. Um, the problem is you need to have Grand Moff Tarkin because these fleet challenges come up and this one right here, which gives you Zetas, which are arguably the most important resource in the game, simply because Omicrons don't go across every game mode, you have to have Grand Moff Tarkin ship. So to get Zetas as quickly as possible, you have to have Grand Moff Tarkin. So, He's a decent enough support. He works with an Emperor Palpatine lead by throwing out debuffs. We need to have him, okay? Because we cannot miss out on getting these Zetas. So, why don't uh, we go ahead and jump into the two challenges now that we've kind of brought them up after talking about our Empire. So, we get our challenges here. These are pretty much going to come. You don't need to stress them. Um, the ability mats... All of these, the gear, it, it's all going to come. None of them are particularly difficult. Uh, with the two teams you're farming, you should get there pretty easily. Uh, and if you don't, it's fine. The, the challenges there are not something to concern about. The fleet challenges, once you unlock ships, the ship ability materials, as I've already discussed, is very important. You want to make sure you're getting those Zetas. Uh, let's see, possible rewards, here you go. You're getting the Zetas in the last two tiers as quickly as possible because you need a lot of Zetas. The other two, uh, we're not we're not nearly as concerned about. In the end, you're gonna have a ton of ship building materials, the credits, and you're gonna get a bunch of the training droids for your ships too. It's not gonna be a concern. So make sure you're getting Grand Moff Tarkin first. And if you get a solid Empire fleet early, it's gonna help you in your fleet arena, which is where you get crystals, which was discussed in the first video again. So that's quickly knocking out the challenges. Nothing there to concern yourself about. You'll take them out pretty easily as you level up in the game. Just make sure you get that fleet one. So let's go ahead and talk about the shipments real quick. This is the general store using multiple different currencies. So I'll go ahead and talk about each of the tabs here and what we want to do with them. Oh, thank God. So the first tab here, you are not going to spend any crystals on any of this stuff. All right, 
unless you're one piece away from a galactic legend and you can't take it anymore. The exchange rates are very bad. They are not efficient. And remember, when we're talking about free to play, and even if you don't want to, if you're throwing money into it, but don't want to throw all your money into it, you want to say as efficient as possible. So, the one thing we are going to do here every single time is going to buy these pieces for credits. You never know when you're going to use them, and I have 284.9 million credits. Um, so later on in the game, you will too. The only reason you're not going to have a ton of credits is if you're super end game and you're moving mods around a lot because that costs money. If you're moving mods a lot, around a lot for like territory battles or challenge rank or raid, that kind of stuff, then you're going to be low on credits. Everybody else should be fine on credits. I can't imagine another reason why you would be low on credits. So don't worry about it. As soon as you think you can get away with it, start buying every gear piece every time that costs credit. Other than that, this whole screen is nothing you need. Weekly shipments, kind of the same story here. These are gonna be, one's gonna be your typical credits, and one of them is going to be, and yeah, it's not gonna show me, but it's, it's fleet credits. It's the same credits, but for ships. Um, so I recommend buying those because in the end, you're gonna have a ton of credits, and if you don't, or if you already have the character in the ship max, like I do, then it just goes to your shard shop currency, which we're gonna talk about later, which is really important for gear. Um, you can use ally points here uh, to get some prestige or some chirotech. Now the data crons are in the game. I, I kind of shy away from those and just spend them in data crons. If you're not familiar with ally points, every time that you're doing a cantina, a light side, a dark side, you are getting ally credits because when you go into the battle here, nah, it's not going to show you because I'm I'm out. Do I have enough fleet? Nah, you don't borrow from fleet. What about Cantina? Nope, I got nothing. You know what? I'll spend a couple of crystals just to help out a little bit. Um, let's see. I actually want to spend them on something I'm doing, so bear with me for a minute. Um, my main account here, we're working on Infus Nest. So, uh, that is fleet. Here we go. Let's go for these guys. So, when we get to this node, typically you're going to sim. But, when you start out, you're going to be battling, right? So, we're going to go to battle, and we're going to purchase. So, when we go to battle here, you are going to get to invite a friend. Okay? This is from your allies. And it's going to give you a bunch of different options based on what your allies have. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. Uh, like those, those are all bad, but a nice little Relic 1 Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker is not too shabby, and the Relic 4 Jedi Knight Anakin, not too shabby either. So, you're getting ally credits even when you sim, because technically you're borrowing these allies' characters. So, every time you burn energy, even if you sim them, you are getting ally points shown right there. So, those ally points build up. And that is what we're going to spend later on for Datacrons when we get to that portion of the shipment. So there you go. There's ally points spelled out. Sometimes they are good for these uh, prestige for your ships and for the uh, gear. So I don't know. Kind of keep an eye on that. Other than that, everything else here is crystals. Really bad uh, rates. Don't worry about it. Moving on. Cantina battles. If you do a cantina battle, you get cantina score uh, battle tokens right here. Okay. Um, once you go through here, you're going to start farming your important characters. Chopper, obviously, first. Um, and then, yeah, looks like that's about it. And then you can start going for whoever you might be aiming for. So, okay, so you're going to do Empire second because I told you to, and I obviously know what I'm talking about. But then you're like, nah, I'm going to do CLS then. Okay, Stormtrooper Han is needed for CLS. But if you're like, nah, I'm going to make a Mon Mothma team, then I want POW and Bissin in it, then you're going to start farming then, okay? Galactic Republic, Ahsoka Tenno, etc., etc. Because I already have all these guys maxed, I'm also going to use the credit to buy a ship I already have, because that's going to give me Shard Shop Currency, which we'll talk about later on yet again. Guild Activity, same thing. You're doing stuff for your guild, you're going to get these credit points. Here you can pretty much freely spend them wherever you want on some gear that you need. Remember, if you're using your favorite list properly, anything that shows up for a character that you're currently building gear on is gonna show up. So make sure you're using your favorite tag and that bookmark icon is gonna show up, which is wonderful. I don't really have any of that going on, so I'm just gonna save it up for the next time I do. Squad Arena, pretty self-explanatory. When you fight in Squad Arena and your rank is gonna give you these Squad Arena tokens. 
Prestige is very important because it upgrades capital ship abilities. I usually go with 1000 prestige, especially late game. Early on, you might need a little bit more prestige because you're leveling Grand Moff Tarkin, Admiral Akbar, Mace Windu, Malevolence, and uh, Negotiator as you come up. So you might want a little bit more. Now, I'm not really knocking out capital ships, so I only need about 1000. Once I get to 950, 1000, I stop doing that and I start buying, that's right, characters I already have for Shard Shop Currency. Oof, bet you guys are ready for that Shard Shop tab already. All right, Galactic War, you're getting these from Galactic War. Again, you got some good characters here. Uh, Zeb, who you're gonna start out with. Um, some of these guys, Poggle is part of the Geo. Captain Phasma is part of uh, SLKR. So there are some important characters in here also once you go ahead and grab them and make sure you're getting your fleet shards too. All of these ships uh, are very good, especially the Geo ships for Malevolence. So make sure you're grabbing those guys. Mods, I've talked about this a tiny bit in the last video, I think. Uh, only ever buy anything that has five speed on it since five, or uh, speed is the most important and the prices are not great here. So unless it's something you really need to complete a set, um, I think I have plenty of offense and I, I don't know. I probably could, but I think I'm good on that. If it were like a, a speed one with a five speed, I'd probably nab it, but be selective here because again, the prices are not great. All right. So here we go. Here's our fleet arena. This is the one place other than challenges that you can, well, it's the only place you can buy them. It's not the only place you can get them, but it's the only place you can buy Zetas cost 2000 fleet a pop. So make sure that you're spending those when you can to get them built up because characters like Galactic Legends are gonna take like seven. The Revens take, I think, three apiece. So uh, make sure you're hoarding Zetas as much as possible. And then make sure you're unlocking your fleet. And you can also get a couple of characters here, which is not too shabby. Um, one, this is actually a place that you can get Darth Vader. All of these uh, characters and ships and stuff kind of pop up randomly from a, a selected pool. Darth Vader does show up here. So make sure if you don't have Darth Vader at seven stars, every time he pops up, you're using fleet currency to get Darth Vader. Moving on, guild events. You're gonna get these from uh, your territory battles, territory wars, both territory wars and territory battles, as well as a couple other things. Um, and again, it's your capital ships for your uh, Guild event tokens too. And it's like Gas and Darth Malik character shards for your guild event tokens one, Hermit Yoda, Wampa, and then some gear. So use this uh, when you can. I highly recommend always saving your get two for Malevolence and Negotiator until you have them maxed. Uh, you only need to save your get ones for General Skywalker and Darth Malik if you're actually looking to get them. Uh, I think they cost 70,000. I think it's been a while since I unlocked them, but I think they cost 70,000 uh, to fully unlock the two, uh, just one of them, it's 140 total. So uh, when you are gonna start the farm process to unlock those, I don't know, uber legendaries, whatever you wanna call them, uh, make sure you're starting to save your guild event tokens. Moving on, Grand Arena. Obviously, you're gonna get these from uh, Grand Arena Battles. I need those, I'll actually pick those up real quick. And uh, these are pretty hard to come by, so make sure you're using them on gear you actually need. So here we go, we finally get to the shard shop. All right, it's about damn time. So when you hit level 85, you will still get shards for characters that you already have seven stars. So instead of this just being thrown into the abyss, you get a currency for them here at the shard shop. And this is all about gear, and there is some very good gear here. So this is a good place to use shard shop currency. That's why all those other currencies, I'm not just letting them build. I'm putting them into shard shop currency so I can use them to get gear for characters I'm currently using. So very, very important shop once you hit level 85. Actually, it might even be once you have your first character seven starred, I'm not sure. But eventually you'll get to the shop and it's very, very helpful. And your conquest. Eventually you're gonna get to conquest when you hit level uh, 85 also and you're gonna be able to get Conquest characters and some gear. Um, I typically, inside Conquest, there are, uh, I'll, I'll probably make a video on this at some point, but there are vendors and you can get relic materials for this uh, Conquest and that's probably what I would recommend as free to play, but we'll get into that a little bit more in depth on a different day. And then good old Datacrons. Uh, 
we're gonna start with Datacron. So these are temporary power. They only last a couple of months. Um, so you're not gonna, as free to play, you're not gonna wanna invest a ton into them. But this is where I would use my ally points to get Datacrons themselves and also the upgrade materials to upgrade Datacrons, especially if, so Datacrons are kind of uh, unit specific or faction specific. If you, if there's a good rebel section coming up, maybe save some currency, you can blast out your rebels and get a little bit more done in uh, Grand Arena and Squad Arena and stuff. So uh, Datacrons are uh, still kind of divisive in the community, but they're here for now, so uh, utilize them when you can, just use your ally points, okay? So there we go, that is walking through the shipments, that is walking through the challenges, uh, talking again about the next team you wanna go ahead and farm. So I'm gonna go ahead and call that a wrap on phase two here of the Beginner's Guide on Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel, it helps me out immensely. And that way you're not missing any upcoming tips, tricks, content, all that good stuff. Please give me a thumbs up if you're able and if you like the content. And as always, guys, have fun. Good luck. And I'll see you on the hollow tables. So I got that going for me, which is nice.